Dermatology is the second least diverse medical specialty that is second to orthopedic surgery. Dermatology residency training programs are some of the most competitive programs to match into as a medical student. In fact, less than 10% of all medical students will become dermatologists. When I realized that I wanted to become a dermatologist 30 years ago, it was late for the application process. I had not been exposed to dermatology until I was almost finished with medical school and it was late for the process. I was not prepared to be a competitive applicant. I did not have any research experience, nor did I have competitive board scores. I did not have a mentor who looked like me, who could help me to navigate the competitive match process. I did not have physicians in my family. It was not until 30 years after my residency training program started its program would it graduate its first black female resident in 1983. A black colleague and myself were in a class of six and we were number five and six to graduate from the program in 1998. I remember as a dermatology resident, the look on my black patients' faces when I would walk into the exam room. Their faces lit up and it was like an instant connection. There was a look of relief, there was a look of excitement, there was the eye contact, the smile, and the trust in the treatment plans that I recommended. Those are the types of experiences that I encounter today when I walk into the exam room, the experiences that remove the doubt that I made the right decision to become a dermatologist and to work in a field that needed me. I am 1% of 5% of black physicians. Less than 3% of female physicians are black. I am one of 3% of black dermatologists. We need more black physicians. We need more black dermatologists. You may be thinking, why? Because representation is important. Representation matters. A low representation of black physicians can compromise treatment, it can compromise outcomes, and it can compromise patient satisfaction. Let's talk specifically about dermatology. Black people seeking dermatologic care are more likely to be misdiagnosed or to receive a delay in diagnosis and therefore treatment, putting them at a risk of a poor prognosis at diagnosis. Let's take for example mycosis fungoides, which is a cutaneous T cell lymphoma which occurs, a skin cancer, which occurs when white blood cells become cancerous. There is a higher incidence, a more aggressive course, and higher death rates of this skin cancer in blacks than whites. This skin cancer is more commonly missed or misdiagnosed because of its less common presentation on black skin. In the photo on the left, cutaneous T cell lymphoma is seen, and it more commonly presents as red or pink plaques. In the photo on the right, the skin cancer will more commonly present as hyperpigmentation, 
brown, black patches, but without inflammation or redness, putting it as a condition on black skin is not of top priority. The patient on the right that has the mycosis fungoides will most commonly be misdiagnosed as eczema, which is not skin cancer, or as the case in the patient on the right, which is my patient, dry skin. We know that the earlier the diagnosis is made, although there is no cure for mycosis fungoides, of course the patients are going to have a better quality of life. Let's take another example, psori psoriasis, which is an autoimmune condition that more commonly affects whites than blacks. But, as was the case in the patient on the right, there was a delay in diagnosis. There is no inflammation there, and so there was not a heightened suspicion that this could be psoriasis. Blacks are more commonly going to have the side effects of an inflammatory psoriasis called psoriatic arthritis than whites. And so it is imperative that this diagnosis be found and given very early on. The patient on the right came to see me after seeing several doctors and not receiving the proper diagnosis. She presented with a chief complaint of joint pain. A biopsy was done and it confirmed psoriasis. Black people, although they don't have as common of a risk of getting skin cancer, they die at disproportionately higher rates from melanoma. And it likely is because there is not a heightened suspicion that we can get melanoma. And secondly, we tend to get the skin cancer in more covered areas like the bottoms of the feet or in the groin area. It is important that we have a heightened awareness about these issues that affect the black population. Representation is important. Representation is important. Representation with more black physicians and dermatologists will help to close the health disparities gap. It will also help to promote more positive outcomes for blacks. There is evidence that states that when physicians and patients share the same race or ethnicity, patient outcomes are improved. When black patients see black physicians, they are more likely to adhere to medical advice, medical prescriptions, preventative care. They are more likely to agree to treatment plans, and they are more likely to even agree to more invasive testing. A low representation of black physicians and black dermatologists creates a medical mistrust in the physician-patient relationship and it also decreases the interaction of black people in healthcare and medical decision making. Representation will increase the ability or increase the excitement of blacks to take part in their own healthcare. Let's talk about hair loss. Hair loss in the black population is very different than it is in the white population. It is for us, it is a very, not that it's not important for everyone, but it is a problem because there are not many dermatologists who understand our hair. In the photograph on the left, the white patient is likely to present with asymptomatic hair loss. That means no symptoms at all. The patient on the right is likely to present with itching, burning, stinging, a crawling sensation 
across the same area of her scalp that the white patient presents in. The white patient is more likely to be diagnosed with genetic hair loss. The black patient is also more likely to be diagnosed with genetic hair loss, because of, but because of the appearance of her hair loss, she may be told there's nothing that can be done. Her treatment plan may consist of wash your hair every day. I often see patients that come to see me and they say to me, I came to see you because you are a black dermatologist and I knew you would understand my hair. Cultural competency is important. You may argue that all dermatologists should be able to treat black patients competently, and you are absolutely correct. However, there are important components of care that must additionally be considered. Black physicians are more likely to understand cultural nuances or to provide cultural competency that creates a trusting, comfortable relation, comfortable um, place for black patients. Cultural competency is inerrant and it can only be taught or understood to a degree. Black physicians are more likely to study, to want to understand, to want to research con conditions in which black patients disproportionately carry the burden of aggressive disease. For example, this patient has hydradenitis superativa, which is not just boils. It's a condition where patients can come in with painful cysts boils, and even progressive scarring in the armpits. Seeing black physicians, they're not going to just dismiss this as cysts or boils, but they're going to be more likely to dig deeper. This is a condition called cicatricial central centrifugal alopecia. And in this partic particular case, What's important here is that if we don't diagnose this condition early, it's a scarring condition in which all of the hair follicles may scar and patients may advance and lose their hair. In this particular case, <clears throat> acne chelodialis nuke, which is a condition that occurs on the back of the scalp, is a condition where black men seem to carry the burden of the physical and emotional stress, this condition can advance into larger scars and bumps on the back of the scalp. When this patient presents to a black dermatologist, we are going to see it as a high priority. This is important to black people. Representation is also important because there should not be any field of profession in which there is not diversity. Representation is important because it gives our youth relatable guidance. It helps them to understand that they too can fill an area in which they are needed. Thank you.